I've been flying from town to town From London to Taiwan I've been all around the globe Trying to protect your soul So that V-Ride 1 is flying. Zooming? Man, I'll tell you what, it's uh, cause I'm not used to it being that fast. So like the turns all the time I've spent on it, I'm used to doing it one way and now I gotta be careful cause it'll like, tear up it'll grass. turn quick. Not tear up grass so much as it'll throw you off the mower. Ooh. Yeah, cause the platform's not as big as like on the V-Ride 2, you got a smaller platform area and it is kind of slippery. Even with my Cujo's, it's kind of slippery on there. So I think I'm gonna put some type of grip tape. Kevin from Fall River did that on one of his V-Ride ones. He got orange grip tape, I think skateboarding like grip tape. So it kind of matched the mower and he put that on there and he said it helped out a lot. So I think I'm gonna do that on there. But that thing is, uh, she's scooting, boy. I wish I'd have done it sooner. I've been talking about it for what, two weeks, three weeks? Yeah. But uh, I wish I'd have done it sooner, but that thing's flying. And before the end of this video, I'll show you guys exactly what Max and I did this morning to make that happen. So Max and I got rained out, but like I said in yesterday's video, if you guys watched that, that's why we mowed so far ahead yesterday. We mowed pretty late last night, and by the end of last night, we only had one left from our Tuesday list. So we cracked that out first thing this morning, went into the Wednesday list, and got six of them done off the Wednesday list. Um, there's a lot more to do on the Wednesday list, but the good thing is, is Wednesday's a day where, I mean, I have a really good route density on all my days, but Wednesday's a day where I park in like one spot and hit, shit, one, two, three, park another spot, hit two, park another spot, hit two, park another spot, hit three. They're all like right there, and all those groups are within one street of each other in a small neighborhood, so technically I could park in one spot and hit almost all of them. Um, so even though there's a lot to do, it's not overwhelming. We'll bang it out pretty quick. So, um, but yeah, it's Tuesday and we're a good chunk into the Wednesday list. So let me show you guys what I did on the Skag V-Ride 1 to make it faster. So right down here, these are the two controls from the two control sticks up here to make you go forward back left right okay so these are two rods that come down and as you put it let me take it out okay as you go see them forward reverse same thing with the other one all i did was took the bolt out at the end and i these look like tie rod ends okay i took the bolt out of the end and i screwed this if you screw it in more It'll raise it up and it'll actually make it slower. I screwed it down so it made the rod longer and um, made sure they were both even. Put the bolt back in, tighten the jam nut back up on it. So that's all I did and now it allowed, it brought the controls back some. 
which on a lot of mowers, it's gonna make it go a lot slower in reverse. That's what happened when I did it on the X mark, which I'll show you, um, I'll show you the downside of that, and I kind of screwed that up, and I think I can fix that. But this thing was already insanely fast in reverse, and so it brought the controls back some, which now allows me to push them forward more. It goes faster going forward. So this is the X Mark Vantage. Now you'll see the sticks are back pretty far in this, which allows them to go forward a lot further, which makes this machine pretty quick. The problem is with only that much room, they only move a very little bit, which makes this machine very slow in reverse. So what you do, because people have asked, um, what you do on this one is you screw these, that adjustment point there and that one there to make, to change the position of the sticks so it'll go faster forward or faster in reverse, whichever way you want it. Um, what I should have done, because I, I crank these a lot. I went almost all the way on them to get it to go as fast as I have it now. What I probably should have done is down at the bottom, let me see if I can get a light in there. Down at the bottom, this has the same thing right there, okay? It has, I'm trying to hold the camera light same, same, same time. These right here are those same tie rod end looking things is on the skag. What I should have done was taken the bolt out of here and adjusted these, and then I would have got the same results as the skag. It would have still gone a lot faster forward, but I wouldn't have lost as much of my reverse speed. Um, so what I need to do is actually um, readjust these up here, get them back to where they were, and then pull them bolts out down there and readjust those. And I should have the same results with this machine. It'll be still fast and forward, but I'll still have good speed going in reverse because this thing crawls in reverse. Now, on the grandstand, let me show you this one. Okay, now I've told you guys before that the Xmark Vantage and the Toro Grandstand are almost identical. They're almost the same machine, but there are a few things that are different. So here is how you adjust the forward speed on this one. You pop the spring off on both sides it's like a little clamp type spring okay once you pop that off this piece is supposed to just come straight up there we go that comes up this is just like a lock to keep it from moving and there's your there's your um i don't know what you call it there's your direction so to speak I'll tell you how to do it so you turn them more that way counterclockwise for the rabbit to go faster you turn it clockwise for the turtle to go slower so by turning these it'll adjust how fast this machine will go it's pretty much the same concept but the thing is these go to cables that go down so you really don't have those adjustment points there are those tie rod end things on the end way inside there i don't know if you can see them there's a light on one right there um so you can kind of do the same thing with those there, but with having cables, it makes it a little more difficult. This machine, I have them cranked pretty much all the way for forward speed. So this machine is pretty quick. It's not as fast as the two skags, but it is pretty quick. Um, but I didn't lose any reverse speed by doing it this way. So this one's still just as fast in reverse as it always was. So that's how you adjust them. Um, the right standards are the same way. They both have them little tie right on looking things on the end, back the jam nut off, and then you screw them either in or out, depending. Um, I really can't tell you it's the same for all of them. Uh, you just gotta kind of play with it and see what happens. So I screw them in, make sure as you screw them in, you put the bolt back through, it'll push the rods up so it'll move your control levers. Um, make sure you, you know, push them back up, put the bolt through, and then before you go tighten it down, look at your control levers and make sure they're even. If one's forward more than the other, it's going to track different, the machine will. So um, just adjust it that way and uh, you, can, uh, you can get more speed out of your machine. Now, um, I've had people tell me in the past, don't do that. You'll burn up the hydros faster. You know, you're, it's not good for the hydros, this and that. Listen. If it wasn't meant to be done, those adjustment points wouldn't be on there. They would be straight down shafts with a little um, ball on the end so that they had the plane that they need when, the, when you're using your controls. They wouldn't have adjustments with uh, jam nuts to go in or out to adjust it so that it controls your speed. All right. 
They're there for a reason. That's why they're there. Some manuals I've actually seen, it's in the manuals and it tells you to adjust for forward speed or to slow the machine down. Like if you're training somebody on it and you don't want it to be as fast, um, it tells you in the manual where they're at and how to adjust them and what they'll do. Uh, I haven't seen it in every mower manual, but some of them I have. So a lot of people have asked me, how do I adjust them? I keep talking all the time about I'm adjusting the hydros in this machine to make it faster. And they're like, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? That's what I'm talking about. That's the two different ways to do it as far as like uh, the rights are the same way as the skags. You adjust them with them little like uh, tie rod end looking things on the end. And I just showed you how the Toro grandstands are and how the Xmark Vantage is, how you adjust those. Those are a little different, but I don't know. Other brands are, I believe those are the only ones I've adjusted. I don't, I don't know that I've even adjusted. Actually, we adjusted the Ferris walk behind at one point, I think. Yeah. It was the Ferris walk, the one that had the forward control lever, but then still had the pistol grips. I'm pretty sure we did it on one of those. But other than that, I, I can't really remember. As far as walk behinds go, I don't know. You're just going to have to look. I know a lot of people ask me, can I do it on this more? Can I do it on that more? I don't know. Um, if you have a Skag, a Wright, a Toro, or an X Mark, that's how you do it. Um, as far as sit down zero turns, they, they're the same way. Um, you have your sticks, you pull in, you move forward back. Well, those go to control bars, um, control rods that go right down the hydros. They have the same thing on the end, the same tie rod end looking things. So you can adjust it like that as well. But uh, instead of asking me in the comments, you know, can I do it on this machine? Can I do it on that? Because I know a lot of people will. I don't know. Look at your machine. Look and see if it has a setup that I just showed you. If it does, then you can. If it doesn't, you can't. So do that and uh, and go from there. But that's how you get more speed out of your machine. So I'm cutting this one here. Um, the sun's already coming back out. We could go out and do some more mowing, but now everything's soaking wet. It's supposed to rain again in about two hours. Yeah, so. uh, which doesn't matter. We mow wet grass all the time. It doesn't matter. But um, yeah, it's supposed to start raining again in about two hours. But this next wave that's coming through is, is yellow and red on yeah, the radar. It's, it's supposed to hammer down. So... Um, we're ahead of schedule anyway. I'm not going to go back out and get pounded in this rain. So I'm going to go pick up Billy in a little bit and we're going to go to the gym. And we're going to call the day a wash. And, uh, not a complete wash. We got some done. Yeah. We got, we got, you know, finish off that one from Tuesday's list and, uh, we got a good start into Wednesday's list. So just, I'd say we're doing good. And Thursday is the only day this week that's not calling for rain. They're calling for rain again tomorrow, but I think it's at night. And then they're calling for rain Friday. I think it's in the morning. So, I don't know. But either way, if it's in the morning, we have a few hours we can mow Friday afternoon uh, before I got to leave to go camping. We at least got Billy on Fridays. So, yeah, we'll be able to knock stuff out pretty quick. Yeah. Friday's list is pretty small. Yeah, and we could take 352s again. We only need, the only thing we even need this 32 for the rest of the week is Wednesday's list. Thursday, we don't need it. Friday, we don't need it. So, we can have 352s on there and be good to go. Yeah. Definitely. So we'll be fine. We'll catch you guys in the next one. <laughs>